Hi, I'm uh, Joseph Chu with Toy Builder Labs. We're in a workshop today uh, introducing people to 3D printing. 3D printing offers people the opportunity to take a idea in their head for some kind of an object, whether it's an artistic item or a mechanical item, something useful or silly or fun, and be able to create it in their own home. 3D printing basically is a process where plastic is fed into the printer and the hot end of the printer acts a little bit like a glue gun but under computer control and lays the plastic in a very precise manner. It builds the object on a layer by layer basis and as it builds up the layer by layer and places the plastic in the precise place that the 3D model calls for, when the process is done you get a finished object that is a representation of the three dimensional design that came from a cat file or a graphical 3D model. Anyone can be a photographer, but they don't have to know exactly how a camera works because they can appreciate the value of like finding something and having a physical representation of it that they can carry around or post online. Similarly, I think that 3D printers can be fun because you can kind of get these ideas of solids and shapes in your mind and kind of put them out and show them to people. And I think that's something that everyone would want to do, not just engineers. Just being able to create a 3D model of a character or something like that and then being able to have it represented without having to sculpt it out and everything, like, it's, yeah, I mean, that's really cool. When you first go through the iteration of developing the product, um, you um, would like to have a faster turnaround. 3D printing has always been the promise of being able to have an idea in my head and be able to test it out. Unfortunately, when I first started learning about this, um, it was way too expensive. I first heard about it back in high school in 1989. It seems kind of like magic, but it's called stereolithography. You dream up an idea, plot it out on your computer, and then presto, out comes an exact model. 3D printing is an essential tool for, for what I was doing at the time, which was to be able to make parts that went with the electronics that I was designing. It wasn't necessarily the first step for me to be able to have something that went around my electronics because I actually could send stuff out to get machined through subtractive manufacturing methods, but additive manufacturing, 3D printing, it's sort of like what laser printers and inkjet printers have done for writing and drawing pictures. You're now taking it to a third dimension. We're artists, we're not engineers, we're not computer technicians. I mean, it'd be so useful if I could do all that, but I can't, so. Well, I mean, like, there's no reason why we can't learn. It's just, I mean, it might take a little bit longer for us. <laughs> you know? Yeah, seriously. I mean, I come from a family of rocket engineers, and it's like, you know, like... <laughs> I learned how to do things that they clearly wouldn't think that I could have done. But it's like, it just takes time. I thought it would be fun to try and make, build my own 3D printer after it today. It seems like a lot of the components of a 3D printer kind of overlap with the components of a, a monochrome laser printer. So I wanted to see if I could do it. I think it would be awesome if there was a place where people could go to like play with the programs and learn from somebody on a more hands-on basis. Also having a space where all of this expensive equipment is available for people who, yeah. who don't have it, which like, who might eventually want to like buy it for themselves. I think that's like the biggest appeal of yeah. this, is like being able to use something that you normally wouldn't be able to have access to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who might have never heard of a makerspace, but now that it's in their library, they might want to go there. And, you know, it, I'm sure it would help out the library too, because now a lot of people are coming there from the makerspace, like, oh, well, look at this, I've got books about what I'm trying to work on. I could, I could look up those one and check those out before I leave. A big part of makerspaces are bringing communities together, so I think it's kind of a natural fit. I mean, I grew up with libraries being a place you go to to gain knowledge, to explore not just the things that you were already interested in, but sometimes just wandering the aisles and picking a book at random and, and, and discovering new routes of, of, of interest. And you know, if it's in a library where people are already coming here because they're interested in something else and they happen to pass by and they see this 3D printer workshop and come in and see what's going on and decide that this is interesting, that it might be useful for them or helpful or just fun, that's a lot better than having a dedicated makerspace where you sort of have to start with someone that's already decided that they want to start with that. I think that's one of the powers of locating a library. The library is, at least in my mind, a place where you go to learn, to expand your knowledge, to uh, have access to information. And today, that information isn't just 
printed words, but in how to do things. And I think that makes it really powerful that you can come into a library and not just learn stuff off of text, but you can learn by doing things.